Hey everyone, good afternoon. It's very nice to be here in UXC 2019. And I'm so blessed that I have the opportunity to speak in front of you guys. Eh, no. um, before we start this presentation, I have three confessions to you guys. The first confession, I'm not really good in English. Yeah. The, the only experience I have in speaking in English when I have to introduce myself in my English course 20 years ago. And so I hope you understand what I'm saying, all right? <laughs> my second confession is I have a lot of slides. I have about 200 of slides. Not because I, I, I want to talk a lot, because I, I need the footnotes so I can remember what I'm going to say in English. <laughs> and the third confession is I will do a lot of humble bragging about my company because my company asked me to do so. <laughs> so because uh, uh, maybe many of you will interested to join us and work in Jakarta, in one of the most coolest places in Jakarta. It's Tokopedia. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. My name is Ajay Ganesha. I am UX designer principal from, like I said before, one of the coolest places in Jakarta, it's Tokopedia. And today I will share you about how we shaping the future with the ecosystem apps. And I will divide this three long presentation into three parts. The first is about the definition. What is the ecosystem apps? And the second is the reason why we create this, why it works in Indonesia, why we build it. And last, uh, the, which is the most important thing, is how we as a designer take a responsibility to create the ecosystem apps. Okay. Speaking about the responsibility, uh, it's kind of funny to see how the industry has been changed a lot in Indonesia because uh, when I started my career nine years ago in Tokopedia, in, in Indonesia as a designer, we don't even know what the responsibility is. We just work. Working as a designer in Indonesia is one of the most challenging things you ever do in your life. Not only we have a very, very low salary compared to other professions, sometimes we have a very absurd job description as a designer. This is the job vacancy I found about seven years ago when I started my career looking for a better job. Uh, this company looking for a designer slash driver trucks. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is very funny because uh, not only you have to able to working on Photoshop or any design tools, you have to have a driver li license for driving trucks. So can you imagine what should I wear for work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wear a formal of a t-shirt like that. We, we don't know. This is a very, very absurd job as a designer. And this, this exists. And what's worse, this is not the worst. When you're looking for another job online, you have a job as a designer with requirement like that. I will translate it, translate it to you. As a designer, you have to be able to hack the computer. You have to know our software and hardware price. You have to be master at design, sound, and video. You have to be a social person. You have to be able to calm down when everything things go wrong. Uh, and you have to know everything. Yeah, if you can understand and the Indonesian, they really read it. And uh, can you guess how much the company pay for this man? 500? 10,000, they only pay you for $200 per month. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we survived <laughs> as a designer. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is my first salary. <laughs> no, I'm not working on, this, on that company. And in 2095, I joined the humble, small e-commerce, Nokopedia. And as the time goes by, we are changing for a single service apps marketplace to ecosystem apps. And 
what do we have done after we changing to ecosystem app? We drive more than 1% Indonesian economy. But how big is 1%? How big is it? Well, 1%, we make 200 million product list with transparent pricing. It's a good thing because uh, the price will be different in every area in Indonesia. We have over 30 digital services to make your life easier. We have over 90 million user active. It's five to almost 20 times bigger than Singapore population, right? We have reached almost 100% district in Indonesia. And the most important thing, we help almost 7 million merchants to start their business, to make a better living, to help them to get more money. And many of them are the first time entrepreneur. That on, can only be achieved by creating the ecosystem apps. Uh, that's just the intro. <laughs> it's very long, right? Okay. Now we start the first part. What is the ecosystem apps? I want you all to recall your memories when you're in high school from biology, biology lesson. Uh, the ecosystem is, uh, can you imagine the area the environment where every living things, non-living things, came inside the area and they make a conjunction, they make a connection, and somehow many of them can not, cannot live without each other. The same thing goes to ecosystem app. Ecosystem apps has the same meaning with that. Everything, everyone, individually, corporate, governor, can get inside the app and open their business, open their service, and we, as an app provider, we create the bridge. We create the connection between one to each other. So they will connect it one to each other, and eventually, they will need each other to keep their life sustained. Am I right to say that? <laughs> OK. This is the example how the ecosystem works. We have one living organism living in ecosystem at Mr. Darman. Uh, don't get fooled by the, his appearance. He is a really, really otaku. He has a dream to go to Japan someday. And let's see how he can achieve his dream by using the ecosystem apps. The ecosystem apps is not as simple as you, the buyer, meet the seller. Okay, Mr. Raman, hey, I need a laptop to work. And he opened the apps, he found the seller. Hey, I sell the laptop. Look at my shop. This is not as simple as that, because behind that, the buyer needs to pay the money to the seller. And what we have, we have the payment provider who opened the service in the ecosystem apps and said, hey, uh, give your money to us, and we will give it to the seller. And the seller itself, he needs something to send the laptop to the buyer. We have the courier that opened their service in ecosystem apps. OK. Uh, this is not stop from here. Uh, the laptop is an expensive thing for many people. So the buyer, the Mr. Darman, will use the insurance to make sure the laptop comes safely to his house. When we have insurance who open their service in Tokopedia also. And it's getting bigger and bigger. The buyer get the laptop and he feels satisfied with the service and he give the seller the five star rating. Hey, I like your service. I give you five star ratings. And the five star ratings will attract more buyers to buy the stuff from the seller. The business is get, get, getting grow, grow bigger and bigger and eventually he needs something, he needs money to expand their business. So what the seller do? We have another financial service in our apps who open their business. He can, uh, uh, he can take the loan from the finance service to make the business bigger. Mm. And let's get back to Mr. Darman. Mr. Darman get the laptop and he thinks, hey, I want to start the business. I will sell the anime t-shirt to make money. What he do first, he can pay the electricity 
from the same app you were buying the computer and he can use this idea. he can use the ads to make his shop get exposed and he and eventually she get the buyer and as the time goes by uh, the Dar Mr. Darman get more order and order and he needs to find another seller who can provide him a plain t-shirt so he will find another seller who sell plain t-shirt it's all connected and how about to go to Japan well and eventually Mr. Darman will have a lot of money and she start hey I can go to Japan he can book the flight and hotel from the same app where he sell the t-shirt and the seller who sell the laptop he getting richer and richer and he will start to I want to invest my money and we can do it because the investment company has opened a service in the same app that's how the ecosystem works everything is connected everything make conjunction and everything will need each other this is the apps where you can find anything, you can use anything, you can buy anything, you can sell anything. This is the one app where you can do anything only with one app. Okay. And why it works in Indonesia? The art, uh, okay. I want to introduce you a little bit about Indonesia. Indonesia is a country of next billion users. We have 170 million internet user we have 100 million smartphone user we have and almost 70 percent of our population is in productive age which mean they produce a lot of money they make money there's a lot of money to spend there are three things in indonesia that makes why the apps work the first is the learning curve obviously Learning is not our habit. It's not in our culture. Okay, in every app, no matter how good the app is, you need learning curve to learn the flow, the pages. You have to make a login. You have to set up your address. You have to set up your payment. You have to get used how the search works and anything, anything. And imagine if one app only provide one service. You have to learn many apps you have to uh, you have to learn uh, because every app uh, has very different uh, very different steps have uh, di very different pages and so on so why don't we make it in one app that's why indonesian people will craving uh, what kind of app that can provide all need, all my needs okay and the second is the phone capabilities when we uh, know the words of mobile first, we are really, really minute. We use the mobile everywhere, anywhere. When you're on a ceremony, when you're sleeping, when you're eating, we're using our phone. We're brutally installing many apps in our phone. We're taking a lot of pictures in our phone. And eventually, sooner or later, the phone storage will be running out. And what do we do when we're running out of space? Uh, this is my phone, and I, I and I experience the same thing. I installing many things. I install the game. I install the apps. Anything. I taking the same picture of my son over and over again. <laughs> He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I can stand to take the picture of him. <laughs> and what happened when we're running out of space? Are we gonna delete the apps we have? or we delete the picture. Surprisingly, many of us will choose to deleting the apps rather than the phone. Because every picture, even they have the same pose, Indonesian loves the same pose over and over again. We don't like to delete them because every single photo has the emotional things. I don't know, maybe uh, for me, I don't want to delete any picture of my son because they are cute. <laughs> have you, have you do that? <laughs> and the third is the offline behavior. This is very clear that we Indonesian love to shop. 
We love to go to the mall. There's a lot of mall. Even we go to the Singapore only to see the malls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even we only have to buy groceries. We have to buy the carrot. My wife want to buy the carrot. They want to go to the mall. Man, it's very exhausting. Why? Because we love to see many things. We, ha- we love to do many things rather than go to the single convenience store. Uh, that's why. This the mall is uh, growing very, very much in Indonesia. While this kind of business is that, it's very rare to see the single convenience store in Indonesia like this. Uh, the convenience store will join with another with the mall, so people can do the groceries while they can have lunch. They can buy buy clothes. They can go to the playing games, watching movies, and so on and so on. Yeah, people love to go to the place where they can do many things rather than do something. Yeah, they can only do one thing at the time. Oh, sorry. But the most important part why the ecosystem app works is Indonesian is an archipelago country. There's a lot of natural barriers that can uh, can be solved even by the government. Uh, the equality. If you live in the city, it's easier to you to find the service. It's easier to you to get the stuff with the very, very low price. While you, if you live in the island, if you live in the small city, it's very hard to you to get the product. By using the ecosystem app, you can easily find the product. The efficiency is the same thing. Uh, if you live in a small city, uh, the service uh, is very hard to find. Sometimes you have to go to the big city near you only to pay the electricity bills or you pay the bills or anything. It's very exhausting, it's very takes time. And the last one is the opportunity. Yeah, if you live in a big city, you have the bigger opportunity to make your life better. You have better education, better income and anything. While you live in a small village, it's hard to you to get the big money. By ecosystem app, you have the same opportunity to open their business without going to the city. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No, it's fine. So this is the last one. So fast. I'm talking too fast. (laughs) No. I have to remember it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, okay. Okay. How do we design it from designer perspective? How do we change? How do we expand? How do we rebuild a single service app into a ton bazillion services crowded like this? How we change the humble app like that into an advanced tech thing like this? The first thing is clarity with why. This is interesting. This is not a technical UX thing, but this is what works in Tokopedia. You have to know why we built this. Sometimes creating the ecosystem apps is like uh, building a startup inside the startup. You are uh, e-commerce, and uh, we are we are uh, the e-commerce. We are marketplace, and. And the another, another day, we have to build a hotel service. We have to build the flight service. It's not really much with our business. And this is not the era wha- where we, as a designer, don't know what are we doing. Many, maybe in nine years ago, when I started my career, we only get the task without knowing why we have to do this. But this is not the era anymore. We have to know exactly the reason why we built this. Because by knowing the why, why you're creating this, you will know, you will have a better product vision. You have better research. You know the audience, who is the audience. The most important thing, you have the better sense of belonging. This is interesting because I, I have a team member who feels uh, what, what we do is meaningless. What we do is uh, not important, and they left the team. So by knowing the why, 
you will have better sense of belonging. You will have the sense of oh, I make something useful to help people like that. This is not about talking the business. The first thing we do is we do this to help them. Not about we, we create this because we want to expand our business to one person, blah, 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 blah. No. We create this product so we can help the user who has need to. We humanize our product. This is the example of Tokopedia case where we have to build the official store. Okay, uh, as you know, as the marketplace, Tokopedia already have two level of merchant, the regular merchant and the gold merchant. But one day, we've been assigned to create another level above the gold merchant, which is official store. We ask, why we have to do this? We already have the gold merchant. Uh, if you ask the wrong person or the bad PMs, they will say, we, have, we can sell our product, we can boost ourselves up to 20%. But if you, write the right if you ask the right person, you can see the reason why we built this. Who can we be? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I can speak English. <laughs> okay. okay, you can, you can uh, read here. Because buyer needs to have more option to buy product without worry if it's fake or not. Also, we can help brands who want to expand their business on online platforms. So they need to appear stand out compared to other sellers. We can help two people, we can help two sites only by creating the official store. Okay, next. Uh, this is another case of we're making the Tokopedia travel. As I mentioned before, Tokopedia is a marketplace apps, marketplace service, and one day we want to create, we want to make the service of flight, ticket, hotel, and so on, and travel things. Uh, we start to ask, why do, I, why do we have to sell this? Nah. Turn out, we, c we can find the reason why we built this. What can we help with building this? We can help another user to create the more seamless experience because traveling is not about you buy the ticket and you buy the hotel. If, for example, if you want to go to, Bal to go to the Bali, you need to buy maybe bikini, sunscreen, you want to buy souvenir without, uh, so when you arrive in Bali, you don't have to search uh, someone who sell the souvenir. Uh, this is the experience we can offer to people. You're not only buying the ticket, you're not only buying the hotel, but you can buy physical goods so you can make your holiday more meaningful and like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is how we do it in Tokopedia. We create the a uh, template like this, product vision statement. Uh, for, for who? Uh, for what? Trust, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and who? Uh, how, how to explain this? Okay. Oh, sorry. F uh, f uh, who? For, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> for, for what? Uh, for who the is that unlike our product? This is the pattern we use. This product is for who? For university student. Who? What are they doing? They shop online. The, the is the name of the product. Uh, we're creating the Tokopedia Corner. This is uh, the product where you can pick your product for people who don't have the exact home, exact residence, so they can pick the product in the campus where they study. This is the product for university students. <laughs> okay, this product is for university students across Indonesia who shop online. The Tokopedia Corner is a physical outlet in each university that makes students easily send their package. 
This is the main point. This is what can we do with this product? We can make students easily send their package into this location and pick them up from this outlet. Unlike, uh, unlike is, uh, the competitor, unlike the current product, our product can make user pick up outside their cost. Is it true, cost? Okay. Okay, the second, I start to continue. Uh, the second point is user comfort. Now, this is uh, of by knowing your why, you will know you will have the better research. So you can start to think about user comfort, because ecosystem app is not business driven, but it's not always about how much service you have. Oh, this app have a lot of service. Not like that. It's about the experience they have in every single page, because each product create end to end unique experience. Okay, this is some of our product in Tokopedia. We have marketplace. We have the feeling. We have we create the feel of straightforward attribute transparent. The user can see the price directly transparent. They can have the batch sell. Who who's the selling this and uh, anything like that with badges? It. <laughs> Sorry. My hand is slippery, you know. It's <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Okay. Okay. In the marketplace, we create the five of straightforwardness attribute transparent. While you go to the travel page, in the same page, you can see the feel of adventure thing. You feel inspired. You feel you're on the holiday. You can inspire to, oh, I want to go here. I want to go there. It's, re it's more relaxing that you go to the marketplace. And we have another page for gamification. We have the playful. We have the festival and touchable thing. I want to touch this. I want to touch this. I want to play this. And even in the page, in the single page, we create the feeling when you feel safe when you pay something. We have clear, like you're entering the bank, it's clear, it's white, it's relaxing. We have clear message. Message, message, I know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying hard to not misspell my words. Okay, this is the same. This is the page where you can top up your data. This is the Tokopedia regular page. And the bottom of the widget, you can see a lot of promo. Well, the other page is the same Tokopedia, it's but for seller. But both of them, you can buy data. It this has the same function. But on this Tokopedia, you act as a buyer. Well, the other page is the O2O page where you act as a seller. You don't have to use the promo, so we remove it. We create the feel when you have to hurry to buy it for someone in O2O. Oh, I, I want to buy this. You don't need to see the promo. And even we can create the unique experience only by changing the copywriting. Okay, we have Tokopedia, and we have another page called Tokopedia Salam. Tokopedia Salam is a page for Muslim. Uh, everyone can actually buy, but it, sorry. Everyone can actually buy from bots. This is the same app, but it uh, has different entry point. When you buy something from Tokopedia, when you, uh, when you successfully pay or purchasing, you will get congrats or salamat. While you're buying something in Tokopedia Salam, the words will be changing to Alhamdulillah. Even ch by changing the words, you can make different experience for the buyer. Okay, the third part is data you can see, aka qualitative data. Okay, we all love data, right? As a designer, we can make everything without data. I love data, I love data. I can make something without data, it's like that. And it's easy to you to get the quantitative, quantitative data in Indonesia. There's a lot of people who want to fill your form and you will get a lot of data. But it ha must be added with in-depth qualitative data because 
you can change only by statistic you can change the design only just only people love the beach doesn't mean the button has to blue what we need is the story behind the number of the statistic because every story has the insight we cannot get from the statistic data okay this is the example the good example why we failed to optimize our statistics data few few years ago in indonesia hey, sorry uh, we have many response we have many feedback from the user that saying our payment step is too long but we don't craving deep enough we only know that our payment is long so what we do we cut out the otp step in payment and credit card we thought oh the step will be shorter the our user must be like it turns out we got a lot of bad negative review because in indonesia paying with credit card is a sacred thing it's a hollywood thing you can easily pay with credit card so when we cut off the otp step the user think that the data must be stolen by tokopedia we got bad, re bad review we got a lot of negative feedbacks and we immediately turn back put back the otp data otp step in our apps so since then we always try we always have to do the qualitative data to build a product uh, this is the interesting case uh, do you remember the tokopedia salam i mentioned before this is how we create how we create the page when you feel so holy full when pay something when you shop for something you feel oh i'm so faithful uh if you if you only rely on statistic or only rely on quantitative you can easily oh the page for muslim oh you have to add the mosque we have to add the picture of people watching or oh, are visiting the Quran, people praying, it's like that. It's as simple as that. But it does we doesn't we don't have an insight of this. What is the thing that make you feel very faithful? By qualitative data, we know the moment when people feel so Muslim, so faithful is when they're pay. When they're paying not with credit card or with conventional bank that's the moment the muslim people feel so holy full because they don't take the interest or we call it riba uh, we we refuse all cash back that's the moment all the muslim people feel oh i'm so holy i'm not sinful by doing this transaction so uh the output is we hide the payment with credit card with banking conventional banking we put it on the bottom while the muslim banking sharia banking we put it on the top that's a very slight difference but can make the unique experience okay i have two more don't sleep uh i make it fast uh, the fourth is be collaborative the bigger team the bigger product makes a bigger team there's a lot of had to think there's a lot of people to work and a lot of us may create the overlapping files we create the same page over and over again so that's why i make, i will make it first we create we use the collaborative tools like abstract and the most important thing we use the design system many of you use it use this as well right okay so let's continue <laughs> and the last be personal this is the most important thing i really like because i'm working a lot in tokopedia to create this be personal which means make the apps where the user can feel oh this app so understands me because just because you have a lot of service it doesn't mean you have to show it a mall in the very first page hey we have this we have this take this take this no because every single person usually only use two or three features 
This is the Tokopedia page I got in my phone, and uh, right, the same apps that my wife got. The difference is, I offered this man fashion while my wife, even though she can cook, she loves to browse and seeing the cooking stuff. I got the monitor, gaming PC, phone, while my wife got this fashion woman that I would know I will never try to buy it. Yeah, and, and, and vice versa, my, my wife will not buy a monitor for me. <laughs> okay, that's the five things. Oh, so fast. We come to takeaways. Oh, so long. You can read it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> takeaways. Designer plays significant roles these days. So that's why we have the bigger salary. Yeah. <laughs> The ecosystem apps allow various services connected to each other. You can find anything in one app. Uh, why it works in Indonesia? Because the learning curve, we don't like to learn, of course. We have a lot of phone capabilities. Or, uh, many of us have sax phone, very cheap phone. And the third is offline behavior, of course. The, and the most importantly, it can solve the core problem in Indonesia. It's about opportunity, efficiency, and equality. Ah, this is the last one. Clarity with, with why. Start everything, start every project by knowing why. Why we create this? Why we, yeah. You are not talking about the business first, please. I always said it to my team. You don't have to care about the business. And then user come first. That's how you can see, aka okay, qualitative. Be collaborative and be personal. Make your apps personal to each individual who use your apps. Okay, last words. Uh, out of uh, Tokopedia is very big right now and have one percent Indonesian economy. That's not something we are looking for as a designer. This is about how we can help every individual who live in a far, far away in the small village to pay the electricity in the middle of the night so their child can learn, their child can reading books. It's about how we can help someone who lives near from the city to get the same product with the same price with the people who live in the city, eh? yeah, in the big city. And we can help anyone, every single person, to start the business, to make their better living for his family, their, her, her family. We make every individual have the better future. That's how we create the future. How we, that's how we shaping the future with the ecosystem apps. Thank you. Yes, everyone wanted to say it was great. Woohoo! Really? <laughs> yes. Yay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So for the Q&A, um, are super apps or ecosystem apps the way to go, or is it just a trend? Okay. Are super apps or ecosystem apps the way to go? Um, I think it's not a trend. I think it's uh, people will looking for something or apps that can provide their needs in one way. Uh, sooner or later, as I said before, the phone's getting full and uh, uh, people don't like to learn. And so sooner or later, they will find one solution for all their problems. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, do you think super apps are the only pr are only prevalent in countries like Indonesia with a huge population? Will super apps like Grab Talkopedia work in countries like Singapore and Malaysia? Of course, of course. Uh, 
uh, like I said before, there's many things that can be solved in one F. Not only about the economy or something I said before. Uh, every country have different problem, right? And I'm pretty sure that uh, the people in Singapore will have a similar pro similar problem like us, but uh, maybe not uh, the. What you, you can say where, where they live because Singapore is a small or Malaysia is <laughs> small country. Sorry, sorry, I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to insult. Sorry, <laughs> because uh, the efficiency, the efficiency will apply to all country, I guess. Also somewhat similar, it seems like many developing countries have super apps, but not in developed countries. Is there any correlation between the success of super apps and how developed a country is? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Can you say it a little, little bit slower? Oh yes, sorry. <laughs> Um, it seems like um, many developing countries have super apps, but not so in more developed countries. Do you think that there's a correlation between these kinds of apps being more successful in um, developing countries? Oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just understand about this question, so long question. <laughs> seems like many developing countries have super apps. <laughs> It not, it, is there any? It's okay. It's okay. I have to write sorry. it to understand. Okay, is there any correlation between the success of server apps? Oh, yes. <laughs> Do I have to answer the oh, reason? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Is it, the answer is only yes or no, right? And oh, I said it, yes. yes. I, I, I guess it's more <laughs> if you want, but that was good. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Any harder question? Oh, okay. I think now we'll give you a token of our appreciation. <laughs> yes, again. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, what? Oh, sorry.